On today's adventure, can we explore both Carlsbad Caverns and White Sands National Parks in one day? It's the beginning of our 5,000 mile road trip from Texas to Oregon. Let's get moving. So we have been planning this for like months now, like it's been a really long time and we finally have the car like fully packed. So today's adventure is really just like an eight and a half hour drive. This morning started with me realizing that my boots had been stolen uh, the day before the trip. Like my nice hiking boots that I've had and I'm very sad that they're gone. And we went out this morning, went to like three different places to find boots, but it's really hard to find boots right now that are in stores. Apparently you have to order them online. It's a really big problem. So we're gonna have to go get me boots right now before we even go to Carlsbad Cavern. All right, here he comes. Show us what you got. <laughs> got boots today. Hell yeah. These. It was a successful stop. It was very successful. Now let's go. We have eight hours till we get to Carlsbad. banana and peanut butter. I've never had a cold banana before. And one, Ellie put this in the cooler. I hate cold bananas. I don't know why anyone's ever put them in the fridge before because it's actually terrible. I think you like it. You know, you know my favorite part about this banana? It's gone. <laughs> That's true. Where are we? of the road to take some pictures because look at this beautiful sunset. So you don't you don't know where we are then? Um we're somewhere in the middle. We're somewhere in the middle. So we just made it to Carlsbad. We're staying at this really small hotel called the Carbani Inn. We haven't even seen the room yet. Room 106. Here's our little room for tonight. Oh, this plasma screen. And a little mirror that's not so bad. We're gonna grab some food and we'll probably just see you tomorrow. $61 a night. I got it on Airbnb. Kind of like a motel looking, like trailer park. Super awesome place to stay. I really liked it. I think Blake kind of... It was like a good place to crash for the night. Ellie's out here like, oh my god, it's so cute. I'm like, oh my god. They're like pod storage lockers. But I guess the job's done. And time for us to get our job done. Like, let's go. Let's it's go. time to go. It's time to go. Secure the bag. Carlsbad Caverns is our first national park on this trip, located in southeastern New Mexico, only accessible by this windy seven mile road. We knew we had a long day ahead of us, so we got there 30 minutes before opening, eager to begin exploring one of the largest caves in North America. We are in front of the Carlsbad Caverns uh, Visitor Center, and we're trying to think about like what we need. I'll be bringing a light windbreaker, <laughs> and we'll, be, we'll let I'm you know who's colder at the end. It's pretty good. I just got the sweatshirt. Yeah, it's pretty good. See, I told you it's a light jacket. She's looking at half, but uh, I'm not really sure. Should I get it? No. No. I can't get it. I don't need it. The cave's just open, so we are actually heading down this path all the way to the caverns. Looks like we got maybe like 10 people in our group, maybe a little bit more. But we're going to try and stay a little bit behind just to get a little bit of the cave for ourselves. So we'll see how it goes. Even to get the self-guided tour, you need to reserve them in advance. And it's different than just having your national park ticket. A website that I have become very familiar with is rec.gov, recreation.gov. That's where I get all of our 
camping permits in national parks, any of our selected ticket entrances, such as this 8.30 a.m. first one in the morning to get down into the cave. The camelback is not working. <laughs> the water's not coming out. Did you break it? Ozark Trail. Maybe, don't, maybe. don't tell them that I oh. got it from fifteen dollars at Walmart. I mean, I didn't. You just said that. It's called budget, <laughs> budget travel. Fifteen dollars at Walmart. Looks like a camelback. Once we reached the natural cave entrance, it was a 750 foot decline directly into darkness. Actually kind of crazy, it goes straight down. And um, my first impressions, it smells kind of like bat poop. Interesting smell, not that bad, not the worst poop in the whole world, not like manure, but definitely smells like something. This hike down cannot be missed on a visit to Carlsbad. Hikers of all skill levels can enjoy the paved path where further down you went, the cooler the air got. Bat pups, they call them pups. Which baby like, bats are like really cute. Yeah. Like if you've never seen a baby bat, um, you should look it up. And just to be clear, that if you're hearing the noises, these are birds, these are not bats. And if we get pooped on, it is bird poop. But we were just told by one of the hikers down here that people actually got lowered by buckets into the caverns for tours came to a tour of this cavern, you went down in a bucket, and then they made these stairs. So that's actually not the first entrance. They used this entrance until like 1932 when the first elevators opened. So that's pretty cool. That was like almost 100 years. Yes, yeah, so you can either walk down the natural entrance like we did, or you can go into the elevator, depending on how much time you have. So we made it to the big room, which is an area where like you can actually come in without needing to do the hike we just went on. And then you have like an option, it's like kind of just hang out here, or you can go down like this um, trail that we're about to go on, which is 1.2 miles. The big room is living up to its name, pretty much. It is massive. I've been to a lot of caverns before living on the East Coast, and this is pretty much no comparison. If you like caves, if you like Coming here in the middle of the summer and not having to walk out in the heat, this is a really good stop on your trip. The one thing that school taught me is that I know now that that's a stalagmite. Oh, wait. wait, what was the only <laughs> thing that school taught you? <laughs> which one's which? This is a stalagmite because it might breach the ceiling, and that is stalactite because it you know, has to hang on tight. So all of Ellie's teachers watching, yes. you did it. We spent the rest of our time on the loop trail in the cave exploring the seemingly endless formations away from the crowds near the elevator. It wasn't that hard to distance yourself from others once on the trail. So we just finished the little hike around Carlsbad Caverns and I think it's so interesting because once you get to the end of the hike, it basically turns back into like almost like a building but we're still in this cavern. Like the elevators are right over here. We have a little visitor center down here so if you're just going to take the elevator you literally come down into this building underground and then go off into the caverns that way and you can take the what 1.2 mile hike that we did uh, and it was really really cool one of the coolest caverns I've been to sorry the coolest cavern I've ever been to it is massive insane come check it out we've only been here for it's 10 45 probably two hours two hours yeah I'll see y'all back at the surface finished uh, Carlsbad Cavern and it's kind of crazy because I was cold in the cavern and then I come out and it's like blazing hot. But yeah, we're going off to White Sands now. So we're about an hour and a half away from White Sands right now and we've run into a bit of a problem and it's right in front of us. Yeah, we can literally see the lightning in the distance and it's supposed to be thunderstorms pretty much for the rest of the day.
So I'm not sure if you can hear it, but we're experiencing a little bit of rain at the moment. On long road trips, you really get a feel for the areas you are driving through and the beautiful and stormy mountain roads in New Mexico, complete with ski areas and moose crossings, felt like a hidden gem few people know about. We can see in the distance in front of us white sands and we can see that there's not a storm there yet. Hopefully we get at least an hour or so before the expected storms roll in of what we can see. So first impressions, it's insanely bright. Apparently they come out every single morning and replow the road. Our main destination in White Sands is the famous Alkali Flats. 4.8 mile loop trail among pristine dunes at the end of the park's paved road. So we're on the trail now and we are literally trying to outrun the storm that we just saw in the mountains. So behind us we have these beautiful dunes all everywhere and there's just about nobody on the trail right now. Um, there's actually not a lot of people in the park. And there's the storm that we went through that's coming back. There's also a storm over here. I don't think it's going anywhere near us today. And then one over here, which is not going near us either. There's this one behind us that's been chasing us this whole time. We finally got through it, and now we got to worry about it again. Either way, we're going to make the most of the time that we have on this really, really cool hike. far away that are on the trail. It's definitely the best hike at this park. And it's really worth it. There's like a lot less grass, a lot less shrubs, and like amazing views. This is definitely like once in a lifetime kind of trail, so. So we got really lucky because the storm never showed up and we've literally been standing probably like, I don't know, 500 yards from the parking lot this whole time expecting to get hit pretty soon and it never came through. And we actually started on the back end of the trail to, we thought the dunes looked a little bit better um, and when we've been taking some pictures and videos and now we're going to go sledding. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm going to show why I'm the best sledder. Last one on the slopes, the rotten egg. <laughs> it's time to go. wax and this from the visitor center and you can get them used for $15 which is what we did or you can buy them new for $19.95 so now that I'm far enough away that she can't hear me I'm like really afraid this isn't gonna work and then all of my smack talk is gonna go to waste so wish me luck or not let's see if I can just slide no it's not going anywhere Ugh. I'm just, I'm just cruising down, nice and slow. Needs more wax. Oh, that's much better. Now we got some speed. There we go. Woo. That was much better. <laughs> oh. That was better. How do you feel about that one? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10, out of 10. My turn. Let's go show him up. I feel like, I don't know what's better. Oh, it seems higher from up here. I don't like this. Blake says to send it. I'm gonna not send it. Ah! Oh my god! Ah! Ah! Oh, that was a good one. That was really good. That was a lot better than I thought you were gonna do. I don't think that's true at all. After that definitive win in my superior... Yeah, no. No? Mine was better. We both had a lot of fun. Both teams played really well. I'm covered in sand. We're gonna drive like five hours to Tucson so we can camp tonight. I would highly recommend getting like rolling around in sand right before you go camping and you can't shower.
that's what, that's what we did, so. You did. I Goodbye. did. Goodbye. This first leg of our journey is only the beginning. 700 miles in 48 hours got us acclimated to life in the RAV4, taking in the changing scenery flying past us. We've already hiked into the big room of Carlsbad Caverns and explored the sparkling dunes of White Sands, but we're just barely scratching the surface of this epic road trip. In our next episode, we take a quick stop at the often overlooked Saguaro National Park in Tucson, Arizona, as well as at our first major milestone, 1,500 miles on the road and camping in our first national park in California. Drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on what's to come. Until then, we'll see you next week on today's adventure.